In this video, we'll walk you through creating your first feed using ArcGIS Analytics for IoT. As you may have seen in the Getting Started video, Analytics for IoT allows you to configure feeds and analytics to ingest, process, and take action based on observations from IoT sensors. A feed connects to a source of real-time data and brings it into ArcGIS for visualization and much more. You can create a feed from the main page or from the feed list page. The first step in configuring a feed is selecting the type of feed, or more generally, the source of your real-time data. Analytics for IoT supports many different types of feeds, with more on the way soon. You can, for example, monitor data that's already in ArcGIS, such as observations being pushed to a feature layer by field users. You can connect to IoT platforms you may already be using, like Azure or AWS IoT. And you can bring in data from common industry messaging systems like MQTT or Kafka. For this tutorial, we'll show you how to use the built-in simulator feed type, which allows you to play a set of observations from a file. The next step in creating a feed is defining the connection properties to the data source. For a simulator feed, this includes a couple different parameters, including the URL to the simulation file. If you're following along, this URL can be obtained from the feed quick lesson in the Analytics for IoT documentation. This file is a set of maritime shipping observations that are available at marinecadaster.gov. It contains a set of observations for 30 different vessels ordered by time, such that there's one observation for every ship in every set of 30 records. On the feed wizard, we would therefore choose to simulate 30 features per execution. The simulation rate is controlled using the interval for sending events. And we'll leave this at 1,000 milliseconds, so we'll be simulating the set of 30 ships every second. We'll also leave the setting to repeat the simulation when the end of the file is reached. The time field index is the column where the timestamp is in the attributes of the data. The index numbering system begins at zero. So what this means is that in this data, where the date time information is in the second column, we would put a 1 for the time field index on the simulator form. So this tells Analytics for IoT which field represents the time. Lastly, we'll also leave Convert to Current Time checked. This essentially ignores the timestamps of the original data and replaces it with the simulation time. It's usually best practice to leave this checked so that map clients can recognize the data as real time. When you're ready, go ahead and click Next. Analytics for IoT Next tests the connection to the source of data that you've configured, in this case the simulation file, and if the connection is successful, it samples the data that's available. So in this case, it's reaching out to that simulation file, grabbing the first few records. And with these samples, the app attempts to derive the schema of the data for you. From the confirmed schema screen, you can make sure that Analytics for IoT is interpreting the data correctly, in terms of the format, the parsing parameters, the field names, and the field types. And you can also tailor the schema in various ways here. So if you want to expand upon the derived field names, in this case based on the header row that was provided with the data, you can go ahead and expand upon those field names. So we'll replace these acronyms with their actual meaning. And you can also correct field types if they're incorrect. One example in which you might want to do this is if numerical values have been assessed as an integer or a float, but you know that they represent IDs and coded information that may start with a zero. In those cases, you would want to set those fields to a string value so that you make sure to not lose any data. For this tutorial, you don't necessarily need to make any changes here, so you can go ahead and click Next when you're ready. On this step, you'll designate the key properties of your data, the location, the date information, and the track ID. For location, you indicate whether the geometry information is specified in a single field, in a set of XY fields, or if there's no location at all. The shipping data has latitude and longitude information, so we'll choose XY fields. And the app automatically detects that there's fields with common names, such as lawn and lat. Now, when data is expressed in longitude and latitude values, its spatial reference is typically WGS 1984, which will search by typing in the well-known ID for that spatial reference. You can also search this available spatial references by name or view the list of fully supported projected and geographic coordinate systems. Next, you indicate whether or not your data has date-time information. And if so, whether those date-time values are expressed as epic values or string values. 
Epic values are numbers that measure time as the number of seconds or milliseconds since a given date, which in most computer systems is January 1st, 1970. Epic values are a very common way to represent date-time information. If your date values are expressed as strings, which is the case with this data, then you have to provide a date-time formatting string. There's a few examples that are included with the app, and when you select the field that contains your start time, which in this case is base date time in our AIS data, a sample value from your data is displayed for you. From here we can see the pattern of this date time information, and we could use the date time formatting pattern rules to enter the correct formatting string into the app. Finally, you also designate whether there's a track ID for your data stream. A track ID is a unique identifier that associates all observations with the same entity. So this could, for example, represent a vehicle ID or a temperature sensor ID. Not all real-time data actually has a track ID, think lightning strikes, for example. But in this case, the track ID for the shipping data is the MMSI field, so we'll select that. With that, you're ready to create your feed. You'll want to give your feed a recognizable name, such as ship position simulation in this case. And optionally, you can provide a summary for the feed. Now when you save your feed, the app will go to automatically start the feed. And the first time you ever start an Analytics for IoT item, you'll need to log into your ArcGIS Online account once more. This authorizes Analytics for IoT to manage long-running tasks on your behalf. And this additional login should occur only once. After that, the feed details page will load. And you can see in the top right that the feed begins initializing. The feed details page allows you to view all the properties you just configured. And towards the bottom, you can also see the schema with any adapted field names, which fields have been tagged as important properties, and all the field types associated with each field. A feed might take 15 to 20 seconds to start up. And once it's running, as you can see here, you can immediately add it to the ArcGIS Online Map Viewer. Analytics for IoT feeds behave like a stream layer when used in a web map, meaning that incoming data is pushed to the map immediately, and there's no need to set a refresh interval to get the latest information. Now, as you may recall, we're simulating these historical ship positions such that we get a new observation for each ship once per second. The live AIS data system typically only receives observations for a maritime vessel once every few minutes. So we're simulating these observations much faster than they would arrive in a live scenario. And you can choose to adjust the simulation rate as desired for your purposes. This concludes our tutorial on creating a feed and ingesting real-time information using Analytics for IoT. From here, you can use your feed to monitor real-time data in different web applications or add it to a real-time analytic to store the data or perform incident detection. Thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.